Hello and welcome to our demonstration video, which we hope will let you see in real time the type of training videos we use on our training portal. I've found over 10 years of training subjects relating to ER, that's engineering recommendations, that it's very hard, in fact even impossible, to put a narrative together that can cover anywhere near even a small part of the subject matter. So, I thought it would be a good idea to show you one of the actual videos we use during the online training of G99-1-6 DNO test engineers. The guy doing the instruction is our lead trainer at www.g99.training, Dave Palace. And with Dave leading any training session face-to-face -face or online, you'll always have a factual and enjoyable experience. Right, after showing you how things can go wrong in part one, um, not going to hide that fact. Uh, it's really interesting um, to understand, in my opinion, that, that things will go wrong with these tests. And what you've just seen there is an actual, it went wrong. But that was using different settings in the relay. And what I've been doing in the last half an hour while you've been away is trying every setting on the rock off filter and I've come to the conclusion now that how it is today because don't forget the sine wave is a movable thing changes from second to second let alone from day to day we've got to understand that it's a movable thing it's never the same there are different influences on it all the time etc so it's not easy to tie it down so my settings are still the same within the mains pro. I've got no vector shift on. My rock off is at one hertz, which is a standard setting. My rock off filter now is at 13. And my rock off delay, of course, has got to be 500 milliseconds. You can't change the one hertz and the 500 milliseconds. That's written in stone. But you can change the rock off filter if you can't get the times right. Now, I'm not standing up for ComApp or any other relays. Some relays work better than others. But I've got to be honest, on the actual rock-off filter tests, I have actually struggled with the ComApp. It's not the easiest one in the world to get to the times to be correct. As you'll see now, I've actually got it set so it's working, I would say, relatively well. Not perfect, but relatively well. So if we look at our screen, we're still in our rock off screen. We've still got our minimum at 49 and our maximum at 51 and our rate of test at 1.025 hertz per second. That's our standard settings. That's where we want to be. In my opinion, that's a, a good default starting position. As you can see, our, our system should be working okay. Our gate is open, so our three green lights are on the relay. It's ready to work. It's ready to test. Now, don't forget now, we are testing this with a rock-off filter at third, set at 13. Now, as you can see, I'm on the up position. How we are at the moment, I'm, I'm on up at 51. And I'm going to now give it a down on the F button, give it a down and see what happens. It trips at 1009. Now if you look at your test sheet, that's a good start because that was was our reducing frequency because it's coming down, it was our reducing frequency. So it's coming down from 51 to 49, so it's reducing. So in the reducing frequency box, the measured value, you can now put 1009 as our measured value. That is a pass. But I don't want you to get too excited because when we see the next part, it's a little bit of a letdown. But there we go. So I'm now going to press our up because we're on the down. We're now going to press up. And it's tripped at 1086, which of course is outside of our bandwidth so you are allowed to keep testing three most dnos will give you three or four tests if you get a 
a failure, they will give you three or four tests to see if you can get it right. Because don't forget, they want to get it right as well as you do. I've always under thought, to be honest, that it is a bit strange how they do give you three or four tests because, in all honesty, if it was a fault, it would only give you one go, wouldn't it? Not three or four. But there we go. So we're now on the up. So we're now going to hit F button and give it a single down and see what happens. And our single down is still tripping quite nicely. Our reducing rate is tripping quite nicely at 1016. I'm now going to, you'll obviously hear that I'm having to wait for the contactors still to go back in because you can't do it till the contactors in, until your gate's open. So on my E now, I single up, I'm going to give it an up. And it's 1063. Still no good. I will say to the DNA, I'm going to try that again. I'll come down, single down. Now, bear in mind, I'm not changing my filter. There we've got a 1018, which is okay. So... I'm not changing my filter because before I started this video, I tried it in every different filter level and I just couldn't get it to work properly. So I'm not changing it. I'm still leaving it at set at 13. I'm now coming from down to up. So I'm coming single up. And I got 1071. Unfortunately, that's three milliseconds worse than before. We'll try it again. I'm now coming down. Give it a single down. My down is still working right, which in all honesty is pretty good because when you think about the logic of it, if you're having a discussion with a DNO witness, you would say in all honesty, as long as the, da the, the lower frequency was working, that would be the test you would really want to be working 100% because it's more liable to get a loss of mains trip on the fr loss of frequency or the lower frequency as opposed to the higher frequency. We don't get much higher frequency trips. We get more lower frequency trips. But I would just leave that conversation in my back pocket for when I was discussing it with the DNO. Plus the fact, one of the other things that with this, so I don't want to call it a crude machine, but the basic machine we got here, we don't actually ever know where in the cycle, in the actual sine wave, we are starting our test. It could be at the bottom of a cycle. It could be at the top of the cycle. We don't know. I have had to use an Omicron tester where you can actually start the test from a certain point, which then that gives you the exact trip, where with this one, you can't. You've just got to basically keep guessing where the starting point is. So we'll give it another go. Single up. Trips at 1064. In my opinion, that is as close as you are going to get it. It's within 40, 39 milliseconds. That's not bad, but you would still have to discuss it with a DNO. And you would still, unfortunately, have to put a file on your test sheet. That's our first one today, unfortunately. We don't want many of them. I don't like any of them. But we've got 1064. And we would have to put a file. Now, that would mean that you would do two things. If you were on your own, you would put at the bottom of the page, you'll see additional comments. You would obviously write in there that you tried all the different filter settings. And the fastest time you could get disconnection was 1064. And you would put that at the bottom of the sheet and then wait and see what the DNO said to you. If you've got the DNO on site with you, you would have a discussion as to whether he thought the 1064 was going to be acceptable on the higher level. In my opinion, with our little bit of background knowledge I've just been talking about, I think there's not many DNOs that won't let that go. But you've got to be mindful that there might just be a pedantic DNO that wouldn't want that timing. If he didn't want that timing, you'd have to put a different relay in because it's literally nothing else that you can do there's no other settings you can change because our settings on our, our settings here are fixed we can't change them our settings on the relay are fixed other than the filter and we've tried the filter on every setting from 1 to 37 so we know it's not going to get any quicker with this relay than 1064 so we now move across our page and we're now going to do our relay operating times. Now, 
if you see this on the test conditions, it's giving you 1.10, which of course is uh, better because of course it's going to be easier to trip because it's a higher scenario. So we set our rate at 1.10. And enter it. Our ramp range stays exactly the same, 49 to 51, but our rate now has changed from 1 to 1.1, or from 1.025 to 1.1. Now we hopefully want to get a trip point between 500 milliseconds and one second. Let's hope these work right so we don't get another horrible fail. So we're now going to come down and up again. So we're down now. We're going to go down now. It trips at 963. That's absolutely perfect. So our down, we can write into our box 963. We're now down, so we can now do our increasing frequency, which is our up setting. And it comes at 992. 992. That's a pass. Thank goodness for that. So we can rub that now. That's a nice pass. So very good. Shows we still know what we're talking about. That's smashing out. For those eagle, uh, eagle eye people, that just shows you that the problem is that when we're doing, well, the problem that you know, they've given us, our maximum that we can use for our pickup is 1.025, and we're getting those slower times. Of course, if we were allowed to go slightly higher at 1.1, of course, our times are coming down much quicker. So it just shows that the actual limit that they've given us, 1.025, it's very close to being um, a little bit uh, close to the edge, as we've just proven, because we can't get a trip point. But if we were allowed to go up to, say, 1.050, it would trip perfectly. But we're instructed to carry out the tests with the information we're given on the test sheet, and that's what we've done. Now, if we now come down a section, you'll see underneath... We've got a different ramp range because of ramp range because we go a different setting. So we've got a, a down of 48.5 and an up of 51.5. So we'll change those now. So set our minimum. And we're looking for a minimum now of 48.5. 48.5. Enter it. Our maximum is 50 is 51.5 51.5 enter it now they're looking now for a trip using our default setting so our default setting should give us a trip between 48.5 and 51.5 using 0.025 Let's see what happens. Set our, going to see, set our rate 1.025. Enter it. Okay, we're now ready to test it. Our gate is open, so we, our system's ready to go. We're on the up. We're now going to come down, single down. The single down, and it gives us nine. 70, <laughs> which, is, which is sod law, it's just a little bit low. So we'll come on the up. We're now on the down, now on the up. 1504. Try it again. Don't wait for the gate. Give it a down now, because we're on the up. 972. Three milliseconds away. Okay, no problem. Wait a little bit longer. Our gate is open. We're coming up now. 
and that's extremely slow very strange this test is difficult I don't care who you are how many times you've done it single down that's good giving us 991 we'll take that 991 on the down on the reducing we've got 991 on our up now don't forget now we can't swap the filter settings again because you've only got one setting once you've got it the way you need it you've got to leave it because you can't keep testing it changing it rather for different tests you have gotta leave it where it is so we're now gonna come up 1493 so our up Is one four nine three and again at the bottom of my test sheet because this is a, another fail in exactly the same situation it's a, it's the, on the increasing frequency I would write down that my increasing frequency was giving me slow times with the settings that were requested by the test sheet so now they want you to come across and do a time with three hertz now this one should be okay because we know it's going to trip pretty quickly the minimum and maximum stay the same our rate of frequency cha changes to three hertz enter it gives us three hertz we're now going to do an up and a down or an increasing and decreasing we're up, we're going to come down, gives us 737. That's not too bad at all. So our down, our reducing frequency is 737. That's a pass. Now our up hopefully will behave itself. Our single up, our single up is lovely, 772 seven seven two that is a pass so we've just got a couple of fails which we're going to put in the comments at the bottom of the sheet saying that unfortunately for whatever reason whether the relay is a little bit faulty or a little bit tired it's not giving us the correct disconnection times so your sheet would look something like that We're now going to come on to the stability tests at the bottom, and we'll do those in a second. Thank you very much.